Right, let's just pray together. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for today, a wonderful day. Thank you for the opportunity we had just to, to worship you, to praise you for your good Father, your good God. You're the King of our lives, and you're our Master, and we magnify your holy name. Thank you for that opportunity. Thank you, Father, you want to speak to us again this morning uh, to transform us. And Father, help us. Holy Spirit, lead us now. That's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to share with you a word that um, I use a lot. When I pray, and, and I use it again on purpose now this morning, but the word I, I will, when I pray, I will say, thank you that you Lord of my life, you the Savior. But the, then I'll add a word that you're my master. Did you hear that? I hope so. I will pray, thank you, Lord, that you are my master. And guess what? God was speaking to me concerning that word. Because the picture I had, the, the meaning of the word master in the olden days, when the teacher in Afrikaans, they will call him master. I hope you've heard that. If you're old enough, over 60, I believe you, were, you'd, you would have hear the word master. Then they will talk to a, a, a teacher the principle, they call him master. But I want us to quickly have a look. What's the meaning of the word master in the, in the Bible? Because it's important that we will know what's the meaning of the word master. And it was amazing to me just to go through it again. The Greek word, uh, one of the words, there's five of them. Uh, there's five words, but I'm going to give you only three. The Greek word. Kyrios is the first one. It's K-U-R-I-O-S. That word means Lord. But it's more than Lord. The meaning of that word is one who exercises power. That means when I say, Lord, you're my master, I'm de declaring that you exercise power of, over me. And the picture that I've got was that I'm in his hand like this. A small speckle in God's hand. Mighty hand. And I, with that I'm saying, Lord, you're my master. I belong to you. But the second word, no, the scripture, oh, if you... If you see which scripture the Lord's using for that, that's in Matthew 6. Let's quickly go to Matthew 6. 6.Somebody who's got power over me. The, the, the example God gave was in, um, um, Jesus gave was in Matthew 6 verse 24. Remember, it's one, one who exercises power over you. Right, Matthew 24, uh, 6, 24, reads as follows. No one can serve two, there's a word, two masters. For either he will hate one, the one, and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And he is talking about money. But what he's saying, if money, he's not against money and I don't want to go there. But he said, don't be controlled by money. Don't be controlled by money. Because if money is your master, guess what? If you love this one, you will hate the other. That's not what I'm saying. Jesus is talking here. And I'll share one day about money. 
But what's important in verse 21, he says, let's go just back to 21. It reads as follows. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. It's all about what's your treasure. My brother and sister, when I declare, Lord, you're my master, what I'm saying, Lord, you're my treasure. I belong to you. You're the Lord of my life. Right, the second word is this, this put this. I'm, I'm going to try and spell it to you D E S P O T E S. The meaning of that, what, this word is the one who has absolute ownership and uncontrollable power. The one who has absolute ownership and uncontrollable power over me. The, the one scripture is 1 Peter 2 verse 18, and I'm not going to read this, but that's where Peter's talking about we slaves, not slaves, yeah, we slaves, uh, when you when you somebody slave in the, in the Bible times, and even years ago, a slave was bought, and that slave belonged to the owner, and the slave's got nothing to say. Now this scripture is saying we were bought by a, by a price, by the price of the blood of Jesus Christ. And we belong to Jesus now. And I will say a bit later about the slave. But and the, the other scripture that he gave us is in Romans 6. Romans 6. Verse 10 and 11. <clears throat> Romans 6, verse 10 and 11. It reads as follows. For the death that he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life that he lives, he lives for, uh, to God. That means he's saying, listen, death has got no place in my life. Sin's got no place in my life. I belong to God. And now he's saying the same to us. Let's read, uh, let's go read verse 11. Verse 11. Likewise, you also reckon, your, reckon yourself to be dead indeed to sin. But alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. What he's saying here, Jesus Christ brought us out of the kingdom of darkness. And he put us into a new kingdom. And we belong now to God. He is now our owner of our lives. Amen? That's the meaning of the word. You're my master. You're my owner. I belong to you. Right, and this third one is... Epistatus. I'm going to spell it. Epistatus. E P I S T A T E S. E P I S T A T E S. The meaning of this word is a chief. And you know that in your culture there's chiefs. Or commander or somebody with authority. That means when I declare, Lord, you're my master, I declare he's my commander. He's got full authority over my life. Um, I was in the army, and guess what? When my commander tells me to run, there was no questions. Even if I thought it was foolishness, I couldn't argue with him. Sometimes... The general will know. Sometimes they just point with their finger. 
And then you know what to do. You just run. You don't ask questions. And that's what he's talking about. He's talking about that God is our commander. The moment I say, Lord, you're my master, I'm saying, Lord, I will obey. You speak, and I will obey. You command, and I will obey. When we use the word Pastor Chris, when you use the word master, he declares this. Right, the third one, I'm not give, going to give you the Greek word, it's too difficult, but it means to go before. That means he's our leader. When you say, Lord, you're my master, you declare that he's your leader. And the fifth one is that he's the captain of my ship. He's the captain of my life. I'm giving him control, full control of my life. Amen? When you pray, Lord, you're my master, that's the meaning of this. That means in short, when I pray, Lord, be my master, I'm declaring, Lord, you bought me through your blood, Jesus Christ. I was a sinner. I was lost, but you brought me into your new kingdom, and I belong to you. I don't belong to myself. You're the Lord of my life. And lastly, that you lead me, that you're my commander. Sometimes, you see, the moment, and when I said it, even when I read it, that he, we are his slave, um, or, or he's our owner. He did not say slave. When we say that, Lord, you, I'm, you owns me. Everything that I've got, you owns me. Sometimes we feel like slaves, and it's not true. Remember, in the kingdom of darkness, there's fear and there's slavery. There's force. But in God's kingdom, He bought us with a price, but there's no fear in love. Listen to what I'm going to say. God bought us because of love. And for me, listen to what I'm going to say. When there's love, there's no fear. There's no slavery in God's kingdom. He gives us freedom in His kingdom. Amen? Amen? I want you to just understand that. The moment I... De- Let me take myself as an example. Um, I grew up in a church but not been born again. I knew about Jesus Christ and what He did, but it was not my portion. And then one day in 1980. In 1978, uh, somebody spoke to me concerning being born again. I gave my life to Jesus Christ. That means I belong to him in his kingdom. But guess what? I didn't know him. I did know a a bit about him. But he, he was not personal my savior. He was not leading me, although I was saved. Then there was a day that uh, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I experienced more the love and the life of Christ in my life. But in a certain way, a certain degree, certain level. And as I was studying the word, spending time even at Bible school, God revealed himself to me. More and more daily. As I was spending time, listen, as I was spending time with him, he was revealing himself more and more towards me. Amen? Although he's my master, there's different levels, there's different degrees. And listen to this. And it all depends what you desire. God cannot love you more. Sorry. God cannot love you more. Amen? Amen? God cannot love you more. He loves you dearly. Each one of us, dearly. He paid the full price dearly for each one of us. But the level of understanding and knowing Him depends on every person himself. I want to give you an example. 
runs, I am thirsty. Can you please give me water? Whoa, that's enough. Listen, God's got more than enough for me. But I can decide how thirsty I am. Amen? God wants to pour more and more and more and more into my life so that streams of living water will start flowing through my life. But I can say, oh, 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 oh. It's enough. It all depends how thirsty you are. Amen? There's enough from God's side. He paid the full price and for, for us to inherit His whole kingdom. We are heirs of His kingdom. We are joint heirs with our older brother Jesus Christ. But guess what? You can still lack. Why? Not because it, it, there's not the supply. There's enough. But it all depends. Are you thirsty? Let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 29. N normally I will go to Ephesians 2.10. But this morning I want to read for us Jeremiah 29. Beautiful scripture. From verse 11. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Listen carefully what's God, uh, what God is saying. Let, let's read. For I know the thoughts... That I think towards you. God's speaking to me and to you personally. Listen, you need to put your name there. It reads, For I know the thoughts that I've got for you, Pastor Chris. Says the Lord. Thoughts of peace. And no evil. What's God's uh, plans for me? Peace. And no evil. So important. Let's go on. Peace and no evil. Um, to give you a future and a hope. This is what God's plans are for each one of us. Verse 12. Then you will come upon me, uh, and then you will call upon me and go, at, go and pray to me. And I, and I will listen to you. Verse 13, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. The first portion uh, of verse four, uh, 14, I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. I'm just going to stop there. What's important? What, what's, what's the Bible? What's Jeremiah saying? God is waiting, and the, the moment we, you start seeking, guess what? You will find. And the more we spend time with Him, the more He will reveal Himself to us. Amen? Amen? Listen, the more we thirst and seek Him, the more He reveals Himself. Reveals Himself. That's why sometimes when we pray and worship, you will find people standing amazed. Why? Because they're spending time with him. They know that he's a loving, good father. My brother and sister, what Jesus did on Calvary was the full price. He said, it is finished. And God the Father said, listen, you're not a slave. You're not a son of my kingdom. But you're heir of my kingdom. The fullness of God is for us. But as we spend time with Him, as we seek Him, guess what? He reveals Himself more and more to us. Give more and more of His kingdom to us. 
That means it all depends about what I'm thirsty. And my prayer, listen, my prayer for each one of us. Let's seek Him. God promise we will find Him. And if we find Him, guess what? We will experience His fullness. He said there in verse 13, what will He give us? He will give us peace. Verse 11. I, I'm reading again verse 11. He said, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. That's God for each one of us. And as we spend time with Him, guess what? He will reveal Himself to us. And I want to pray and ask you, this is the season, and I don't need to tell you, it's very dark outside. It's difficult. There's storms raging. There's attacks uh, on our people, in our congregation, a lot of people. Ask us to pray for them. That's sick. Pray for people that's battling. No work. No money. And all I'm saying to each one of you, I want to ask you, let's see God's face. Because He wants to be master of our lives. And as we open our lives towards Him, guess what? He will reveal Himself more and more and more to us. And when that happens, then we will can stand against the wiles of the enemy. Amen? God wants us to be more than conquerors. And the only way to do, that, to do that is we know who's our God. Amen? Amen? What Jesus Christ did on Calvary. Amen? So important. And that's why I want to urge you, brothers and sisters, I want to urge you, let's thirst for Him. Let's seek Him. He promised when we seek Him, streams of living water will flow through our lives. Amen. I quickly want to give a testimony. Uh, we, we married somebody in, in, in Stellenbosch. And um, traveling back, we went to the town of um, Swellendam. And um, we went in to buy for my brother-in-law something. And as, as I was walking to my vehicle... A colored lady came to me, a tiny lady. Um, I heard that she was 21 years old, but she, beg she was begging for food and, uh, and money. And I said, listen, I had food. I told her I've got food because we were staying over and we did buy something. And I said to you, uh, ask her, but uh, are you a Christian? And she said, yes. I said, oh, that's good. Uh, do you go to uh, church? She said, no, I'm not going to, uh, to a church. I said, have you, got, have you got a Bible? She said, no, I haven't got a Bible. And um, then I asked her, what did Christ do for you? And she couldn't answer me. Yeah, it was shocking to me. You understand? Uh, the crucifixion of Christ, she, she do not know anything about Christ. And um, as I was start sharing to her, uh, I, uh, I decided, I said a lot of stuff, I'm not going to share that, but then I said, can I pray for you? And I just hold her and start praying for her. But there were sitting a lot of, uh, yo, let me say the. There were a lot of masters sitting there at the benches. Men, she said to me, they are misusing her. Um, and they forcing her to go to people to get stuff so that she can give it to her masters that's sitting there. But as I was holding her, first I held her hands and I prayed for her. And then she was crying. She just started crying. And uh, I just could hug her and just love her. And uh, it's so shocking. The people, listen, not, even, not, not only in Cape Town. There are people in town that need Jesus Christ, my brother and sister. Uh, other, uh, other man, 
um, in, in still by, I, we caught fish and I, I'm cutting off the head and the tail. We're not uh, eating that. And the colored people, they make a soup of that. And I called him and said, listen, I've got something for you. Do you eat uh, fish head and tail? He said, yes. And that was my connection point. And I asked him, listen, are, are you Christian? He said, no. I'm not a believer. I don't believe in Christ. I don't know the Bible. You understand? What I'm saying, there's people outside there, they, they are lost. And if we don't share the love of Christ towards them, nothing will happen. Amen? Let allow the Lord to be master of our lives. Say, Lord, you're my commander. If you send me, I will go. Amen? And as we go, he will help us. He will lead us. Let's seek him, my brother and sister. Let's seek him. It's a season that we need to seek God as never before. Amen? Let's pray. Thank you, Father, that you're amazing, Father. Thank you for saving us. And thank you that this morning we can declare you are our master. Jehovah, Yeshua, Holy Spirit, you are our master. We belong to you. You bought us. You set us free from the kingdom of darkness, of slavery, and you brought us into a kingdom of love, of sonship. And we thank you for that. And this morning, Father, we give ourselves to you. Not only personally, but our families. My wife, my children, my work, my finances. We give to you. And ask that you will be the master of our lives. We belong to you. And we thank you for, for being brought out of a kingdom of darkness. Father, I want to pray for each one of us that's here this morning. Help us to be light. That people will see your glory in us. That we submit to your lordship. That you are master of our lives. Use us, Father. For the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen. Amen. I invite you. Listen. Am I there? No. I know he's my master. But I need to press him. I need to, to yearn and seek him. And thirst for him more and more and more. And that's my prayer for you. Let's seek him. Because as we seek him. As we thirst for him. He will reveal more and more to us and we will become more Christ like. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed. Have a good week. Thank you, Father. What is that? Yes. Oh, let me just close. Thank you, Father, that that you're going to use us this week. Father, there's a lot of people outside there is living in darkness. No hope. No future. Father, send me. Send me. Use me for your glory this week. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. And everyone said, Amen.